happening. Going through the papers this morning is women's rights campaigner Natalie Collins. She's got some stories for us. Morning, Natalie. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Now, looking at the papers, as I've said, most of the papers, uh, front pages, have gone with the um, Macron. Um, but also, the, it's interesting because a lot of people, a lot, millions, actually abstained and others actually said none of the above type thing. I mean, you know, no French election uh, on uh, some of them. What else are they putting on the front pages if well, it's not that? I know, we've got a pill about broccoli. We've got, um, yeah. you know, and it's. I think it's really interesting which newspapers have chosen not to lead with that as their story. Um, and it's often, apart from the Daily Telegraph, it's all the very right wing ones. And I, I would suggest if Le Pen had won, there Ooh. would have been a lot of celebration, which would have been quite re- really problematic given her very racist <laughs> views and, you know, kind of her fascist kind of background. So I think it's really interesting that um, almost, I think it says as much about what a newspaper doesn't put on their front page as what they do. And I think, you know, in these days where, you know, we're looking at the kind of fake news and all that kind of stuff, I think even the traditional newspapers and how they choose to, um, what they choose to wait. And I think it's really hard for people who buy the newspapers to, they, they get a newspaper and they think, oh, that'll have the main news, the most important news. But every newspaper has an ideology. It's coming, you know, there's very few that are actually independent. And so I think it's really important that as consumers, we are thinking, oh, like, what is this newspaper standing for? Do I really want to be mm. engaging with that? Because I think so much of our information still comes from newspaper, doesn't it? Well, when you when you look at, at, at absolutely, and we are swayed with newspapers. I mean, I mean, I think we can say we're not, but I think we are. I think most people still like to pick up a newspaper, and especially yeah. like you've got the Metro, which goes, it's free, and yeah. everyone picks it up at train stations. I think where we're lucky here is we get all the papers, so we see them all. Yeah. But when you see the piles of newspapers, all the mail has gone in, in a lot of places. Uh, you rarely see all the Guardians gone or whatever. Yeah. But if you got both, you'd have a really quite a balanced view because one is heavy right, one is heavy left. Yeah. So you'd get quite a good view then. Of, of, probably in the middle is about right. Yeah, well, I think it's that thing of being well informed, isn't it? And I think the challenge is now with Facebook that your feed is is um, shaped based on what you look at. And so if you if you have a Facebook feed where somebody looks at particular stuff, they're going to get lots and lots more dominant news that fits their viewpoint. And so we're getting this kind of constant reinforcement, mm. which obviously always happen with newspapers, but at least with a newspaper, when you go to buy your newspaper, you've got all those different newspapers, aren't you, to look at. And you can exactly. go, oh, well, that's saying that's the top news story. And that's saying that's the top news story on Facebook or on other news sites. You're not going to get that kind of different viewpoint. So I think it is, it's really interesting to say, well, why, why aren't those? This is one of, this is such a huge story that Macron mm. has won. You know, somebody was saying, I was listening to something where they were saying that actually, um, it's like in a year's time, there being an election held and nobody from the Conservatives or Labour winning and some other party that's literally was established today mm. suddenly winning. And that is huge, huge mm. news. And they're only our neighbours. They're our closest country. So yeah, yeah. it is really important. And I think in the Brexit negotiations and all that, who who is going to be in charge in France has a big part to play in our in our kind of country's possible future, really. He has said that he likes um, the UK. Um, yeah. So hopefully that'll, that'll show and that they can just have sensible discussions rather than these, what has been going on at the moment, which is like school, oh, school boy stuff, yeah. for goodness sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what? It, and the EU have actually got to say, look, we're not going to stop them leaving. We may want to use them as a whipping horse. That's so ridiculous. Just sort it out. The best for everyone. And exactly. they talk about EU people living over here as if there's no uh, uh, living over yeah. there, as if there's no one living over here. And you actually yeah. go, sort that out first of all so that normal people can actually go, yeah. phew, we can all relax. We can all relax. Well, I've got friends who've got people living over in France yeah. and Spain and they're really worried. Yeah. And they're sort of saying, this is human beings. Sort it out. And you said, no, we're not going to sort it out. Oh, oh lordy, lordy. Yeah. Anyway. I think it's a difficult one, isn't it, though? Because actually our country voted to leave this club that gives us access to all those benefits. So it's kind of like, actually, it'd be really interesting to find out how many people are worried about this who actually voted to leave the EU. Because mm. that, cause actually, when we were thinking about leaving, it was all about getting our independence back and all that mm. kind of stuff. But actually, there are lots of benefits that we're discovering now. And actually, you know, do the EU owe us anything if we choose to leave? Well, I'm, I'm not sure they do. You know, if I if I was part of a group that got be- membership and you got benefits for it, and then I said, right, well, I'm going to leave. I say, right, well, you're going to lose your benefits. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, well, that's kind of what happens, isn't it? But so. I think that Juncker's uh, comments and that has made most people actually go, they want you to remain. Why on earth do you be vote to remain <laughs> when you've got a guy like that who's going to be yeah. ruling? I mean, for God, grow up, 
young yeah. you, you just want to go there don't you you just want to say <laughs> grow up all about this oh we're gonna oh for goodness sake anyway yes. there we go <laughs> have you got that out yeah <laughs> got that over football club payouts yeah. now this is much more interesting yeah. in the mirror um, so the daily mirror um, really you know terrible ongoing story about the amount of children who were sexually abused by um, within football cl- clubs training children to do football and I think you know in every establishment that is particularly male dominated the Catholic Church scouts um, football clubs we see this over and over again that children particularly boys being very vulnerable um, to these terrible terrible violence and abuse that they were subjected to and what it's saying is that that it could actually bring some football clubs down because of the compensation claims that these poor um, men who were children at the time are going to kind of potentially seek and I think you know it's kind of I don't know it's sort of sympathetic to the clubs and I think well you know (laughs) kind of oh it could bring the clubs down it's like well really you know this is about their statutory responsibilities and then you know loads of people knew what was going on and these people were kept in positions of power and were unable to do this and I think you know that that actually, if a few clubs did lose their their ability to continue because of this, they might be more motivated in future. Sadly, they should be motivated by caring for mm-hmm. children. But if not, the fact that you know if, if we don't do this properly, we'll lose money. If if anything stops children being abused, then it really needs to happen. Mm. But of course, we we're talking about historical yeah. abuse, and you would pray that things have been learnt and things like this were not going on today. I mean, you you hope then that people would turn around and go, oh crikey, football clubs are going down. So we just make sure that we're all squeaky clean. Although there's another story in the papers that says that some schools won't put sun cream on children. They're getting burnt because they're worried about the touching thing. They're allowed to touch in certain <laughs> instances. For goodness sake, you can't put sun cream on a child yeah. who's burning. Oh. Well, it's a, it's a, it's that whole thing of understand. You know, I think that as a society, we're not very good at understanding sexual abuse and understanding how it happens, and you know who perpetrates it. And so we end up with these ridiculous, pointless rules which don't protect anybody. Yes. Um, in in favour of rather than doing what we should be doing, which is much more um about kind of really good preventative work that actually addresses the the challenges mm. needed to um to stop this. We're talking about teaching later in the program today, and about the lack of teachers. And I think one of the the reasons is is that they're so worried of being accused of what this that and the other not knowing the rules and not knowing how and different schools yeah. apply them differently it must be an absolute Nightmare, a nightmare. Moving on, a Jedi Library. This in the Echo. What was this? Yeah, so I, I just thought it was really lovely. The um, South End Library had a, um, a day for children to come and learn Jedi skills, um, and I think you know I just really wanted to um, celebrate libraries. And lo- you know, libraries are such a huge resource locally um, for us, and and you know they they're losing funding and they're losing support. And you know, I mean, I was in my library the other day, and there were people on the computers. You know, they were nearly all used. There's free computer access there's lots of resources and so I think you know it's great that they're they're doing stuff to get kids into libraries and I think you know it's such a resource that we you know people won't realize until it's gone just how precious mm. the libra- libraries are but yeah I think you know in the age of the internet we can think that libraries aren't important or that children you know can get their information from google but it's really lovely that they the library was running this day to get children inspired to use the library I think and can I mention to you old bods out there who say I don't need the internet I do yeah. look you go <laughs> to your library and they they often have help there for you yeah they you. have courses they have often, courses. don't they so that you can go as um if you don't understand the internet yeah. i've tried to encourage my dad to go to one you know go to the library and just yeah. just learn get a bit of literacy around it because i think it does feel totally overwhelming and yeah. all consuming but life can be so much better with a bit more understanding about the internet. you don't have to like take it on and have it all the time but at least just not feeling intimidated and petrified of this mm. this thing that's sort of taken over the world can help you just to just understand a little bit more about how to do it or what how it works can just help you feel a lot safer as well I think and can keep you independent yes till the minute you pop your clogs yes it can help you to order your own food to do your own shopping to buy your own Christmas presents when you can't get out anymore exactly so think of that just think of it as I want to open this door into a whole new other world go to your library while you can get down to your library and say when you do when you're doing call singer who can help me or or I tell you what was brilliant in my library just a little while ago I was in there taking back an audio book that I'd had like for, forever thank you <laughs> library for letting me off um, which I discovered I found it under yeah. a pile of stuff <laughs> and I went back there and there was an elderly lady who'd gone in and I heard her chat and, and he said he said we haven't, he said oh come over with me and he sat down yeah. at the computer and was running through stuff and I thought you know what 
there you go. And she must have been maybe late 70s, maybe yeah. early 80s. But she was learning because then she will be independent yeah. to the day she pops her clocks. Yeah, definitely. And I think also if you've got grandchildren, having your children, you know, get, yeah. being able to join in with them and understanding what's going on in their lives and being able to participate in stuff they enjoy. It's, you know, it's a really wonderful, wonderful resource. It can be scary, but it is really wonderful if you have the, you know, know a little bit more. Natalie Collins, you can go and have a cup of coffee. Look, we're slightly late because I was interested in that in that chat. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, more with Natalie in about 20 minutes. But right now, just gone half past six. Time for the news headlines with Sonia Watson. BBC Essex. This is BBC Essex. BBC Essex, I'm Sadie Nyan, and joining me in the studio to continue going through the papers, uh, women's rights campaigner Natalie Collins. Hello, Natalie. Hello. Back in again. I love your hair thing, by thank the way. You, thank you. It's really nice, actually. I like that. I was looking at that thinking, I'll nick that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Very nice. Now, what have you found for us? Uh, this is one of the best stories of the weekend, Boko yeah. Haram. Yes, that they've freed 82 Chibok schoolgirls, the girls who went missing a few years ago now, in 2004, um, and they freed them in exchange for um, a number of their, I think five of their kind of... Um, people involved from Boko Haram that they've done some sort of negotiation and I think you know it's really really wonderful news but at the same time um, in terms of the girls who have been released previously there's been huge issues in them not being re um, accepted into their communities because most of them now have children most of them have been you know systematically raped and all that kind of stuff and so you know it's great that they have been released but when we're seeing kind of you know three years ago I mean, the trauma that they'll have suffered and there won't be the support in their communities to deal with that so I think you know of course we need to celebrate it but I think it's one of those things that often when we see a story like that we think oh isn't that brilliant we don't think about the ongoing trauma for the rest of those pe- those girls lives and mm. you know some of them will be women now and you know how hard it is and for them to re now accustom themselves to the wider community and whether the wider community will accept them and that kind of stuff so I think you know it's it's really wonderful news but obviously you know just the what they've been subjected to you know conti- will continue to traumatize them so yeah and you have to think of the girls who are still in captivity still yeah. held captive as well so you you can't let it go and you can't sort of think oh well they're back as you say a yeah. lot of them won't be accepted and you think it's it's almost animal like in a way isn't it that that once once uh, certain animals have been touched by humans or whatever then it's very difficult to put them back because they'll smell them differently or whatever and you actually go but we're not animals we're humans yeah. and these these children didn't ask to be taken no I think it's you know it's just huge you know I mean I think that anybody who's been subjected to sexual violence will you know even in the UK or in places where, you know that actual experience is often shameful and that people don't respond in positive ways and people respond in really negative or alienating ways you know and I think that that's really hard because I think mm. you know wherever we are there are so much stigma attached to sexual violence and I think you know understanding that there is help available Rape Crisis England and Wales have a phone line that runs um, every day of the year so you know I suppose it, there's definitely going to be people listening who that'll be part of their story um, and so mm. it'd be you know it's good to know that if they google rape crisis in, um, rape crisis there are is help available so yeah so I think it's that bittersweet thing of it's it's really wonderful that they are um, you know that they're, they're released um, though I think you know if they could have it's taken three years for the government to negotiate this which sh- just shows the lack of value of these girls um, you know and, and girls and women generally in society um, but hopefully they'll be you know kind of support services and charities that might be involved in kind of supporting them and enabling them to move on with their lives but thankfully they are alive they are free and their parents can you know see them now which is Mm. really wonderful thank goodness for that now half of vapors say they have quit cigarettes so so this is good news it's really good i think so yeah and uh, you know i mean uh, there are kind of various chunterings saying oh you know we don't really know how good vapors are or we don't know like what vaping does to people because it's such a new you know phenomenon Mm. but I think you know there is no doubt that it is a million times better than smoking so I think you know it's really one of those really positive um kind of influences I think often you know when something becomes popular it's not necessarily very good you know often it's kind of perpetuating something that's not great but on this I think you know you see that lots of smokers are now moving on to vaping and it's so much better for people's health and you know the nicotine obviously it's great it'd be great not to be addicted to anything but I think you know it's just really wonderful the what difference that's going to 
to make to the health of the nation, really. Mm, yes, yeah, so, so so keep vaping out there. Although we can't say keep vaping because, as you say, we don't know the absolute long term thing because it hasn't been going on that long. No. But you just hope that um, that will all be well. Yeah. Uh, sats this week. Oh, yes. scary for the yes, kids. Yes, I know. And I just thought, you know, my son is 11 and he's doing his sats this week. And I thought it'd be really nice to do a bit of a shout out to all those families where sats are going on and to say, you know, that it's really important that children know that it's just about um, testing teachers, really. That's it's right. a shame they can't sit and do the test, isn't it? Yeah. But their children have to do it. And actually, you know, it's really, um, it's a it's a hard thing. And, you know, I think this government particularly are really, you know, pushing kids in ways that are not helpful and, you know, and not comparative to other parts of the Europe or other parts of the world. And it doesn't actually help them at all. But, you know, it must be endured. And I'm sure that's a life lesson for them. But yes, mm. my son had a list of things that he had to um, bring, they could do to relax him. And he took it as, you know, prescriptive i have to have sweets and i have to go for a walk and i have to do exercise and i have to have a film to watch and i um, yeah, wanted to li- make sure that he'd done all the relaxing things which wasn't particularly relaxing for the rest of us at home has to be said but he um he was very uh pleased and you know he was he's a bit worried about it and i think a lot of the children will be but i think you know it's important that they understand it's it's actually about the teachers it's not about them i, I had to say that to my niece and we we said that to her and said that to her because she was a bit of a worrier and it's yeah. just say this is to check that teachers have done a good job yeah. and that you understand what the lessons have been about and so on and so forth but it doesn't help them really. then it just occurred to me maybe they'll be worried that their teacher might you know get yeah. into trouble if teacher. they don't do well maybe you know kids who care maybe it's worse the fact that it like relies on them to make their teacher look good maybe we're getting it wrong here uh, but yeah so bless, bless them so all these kids go in to do their sats today I hope and for their parents yeah. best wishes for the parents to cope with these kids who are quite stressed and sad and frustrated this this week so. get that relaxing stuff done yes and, and you won't be relaxing while they are but anyway no. never mind now race for life um in south end yeah. i was down there i was at um at the garan park um, brilliant waving them off as well yeah yeah really lovely so the echo news has got um a uh, a full eight page picture special of the brilliant. the race for life and i think it you know it's just one of those really wonderful things of when women get together and do awesome things together and i think um yeah you've got some kids there too but but really, this is about a really special time for women to come together and to do something. I think as a society, there's so many ways that women are competing against each other and feeling really negative towards each other. We're constantly feeling under pressure to look better, to, to you know, kind of be quite superficial and all that kind of stuff. And so this race and, and what it represents for women to kind of get out and say, no, we're going to do something really positive and we're going to do it together. And there's, you know, like as a woman, there's nothing better than being in a woman only space where mm. women are just, you know, awesome. And so I think this this race for life apart from it being about a really positive thing about women you know kind of raising money and trying to contribute to the fight to end cancer which is obviously a really important thing it's just you know overall that wonderful sense of women coming together and doing something positive which I think we need a lot more of in our society well I was thrilled to be down there and wow. see I tell you what I loved as well down there when, yeah. when it is race for life and I always feel these women are racing for people like me because yeah. I've been I've suffered uh, cancer twice and been through it and you think but for you doing this there wouldn't be so much research and I probably wouldn't be sitting here nowadays as as like millions of others will say as well and to see them all in their pink gear and nobody looking at each other like oh the size of her or look (laughs) at her why should you wear this every one of them there for the reason every one of them and they had things on their backs I mean my sister-in-law had running for nine on her back Uh. which just made me choked Um, and everyone who turned up to support them and they raised a lot of money I think they raised like £80,000 that day which was uh, totally amazing but to see them all running off and I've done that I did a video I did actually and I'm going to see we need to check out if I can I can put it on my Facebook page I did a video of every single person as they ran past so I'm going to try and put that it was about two minutes or three yeah. minutes with I just videoed and even the ones who were walking the only one I missed was the very last one who got there really late oh, and we all cheered her oh. but she it was about three minutes yeah. after everyone so I'd stopped videoing but I got everyone on there so hopefully I'll be able to put that up we will check with, yeah. with the uh, organisers that and we it, can do that yeah I think it's one of those things where actually you know women and their health as well and, and getting out yeah. and running I think often you know the kind of this girl can campaign about getting women doing sport yes. because there is a lot of research that shows that women don't do it because 
they're they're worried about not looking good or looking sweaty or you know having to wear clothes that are quite tight fitting which are quite uncomfortable if they're um if they feel like oh I'm overweight or whatever so I think it's a really positive thing that you know getting women to realize we can do exercise because it's so much better for our health if we do yeah and I love that advert which it shows yeah. you're all, all doing all sorts of things and yeah. swimming and it doesn't matter and you actually go these are real women these are <laughs> these are not airbrush women these women are women yeah but men don't seem to care do they no really? and I think you know well we're not when we we're constantly surrounded by these images of women mm. in looking and we're seeing more and more men having eating disorders because of the amount of six pack six packs yeah. we see on men years ago apart from very you know there wouldn't be very many six packs around whereas now so many kind of images of men with six packs that a lot of especially young men and adult men are kind of going to the gym and obsessing about getting a six pack but you know for women we've had it for years this pressure to look a certain way and to and also I think the other thing that's quite serious in terms of exercise is for a lot of women sexual harassment you know that actually when you go for a run you know that you're going to get cars beeping at you you're going to get men shouting at you and all of that kind of stuff's really unpleasant so you know to the men out there it's not complimentary (laughs) just let women just let women get exercise and get fit (laughs) see every woman as your sister or your mum and then you won't beep and shout as a human being being. (laughs) thank you so much Natalie for coming in as ever Natalie Collins